All right, uh, just a few words from the organizers. So good morning and uh, thank you very much for coming. And on behalf of the organizers, Alex and I would like to uh, welcome you to this uh, seven week workshop which starts today. And I think it's very uh, good timing because we just, just two months ago, we just had this uh, National Academy of Science report. It's just a very uh, positive report, which is a boost to the uh, ESG uh, project. Um, but uh, before coming here, we had a long way. And so here's a brief uh, kind of history. And uh, I think the, the very important step was this uh, 2010 90 workshop. This was a 10 week uh, workshop. And this was very important to lay the foundation and create the ESG community. And this has led to, so the proceedings turned into a white paper in 2012 and revised in 2014. And this uh, white paper was really important for the, this decision of, but, but from the NSAC, this long range plan, where, where uh, the, the construction of ERC has the high, was the highest recommendation to the DOE. And uh, given that report, then the, the DOE asked the National Academy of Science, and there was a special committee, and I think Larry was uh, one of the members, and they worked, so they tried to assess the importance of the electron ion collider and finally came up with this 100 uh, page report, which is summarized by this just one sentence that uh, the science that can be addressed by the NIAC is compelling and fundamental and timely. So I think now it's a very exciting time. And here's the some outline of the, our workshop and website and goals is to assess the current status of the ESG related physics, the theory and phenomenology, discuss new ideas, new measurements, welcome new people, and it, it can possibly uh, uh, connect it to a next uh, white paper, but uh, this has not been decided yet. And here's a breakdown of the weeks, and uh, we have seven weeks and conveners are shown here. And you can see the number of participants is quite remarkable. This is uh, uh, extra large. Uh, com compared to the normal INT workshop. And so the maximum number of participants is 25, and we had a hard time to keep this number to the maximum. So that's, it. and uh, obviously some, some of the weeks we couldn't make it. So we had to, we had to convert the second week to the workshop week because we had so many applications. So, and that shows uh, how exciting this uh, meeting is. And we even created a poster. That's, this is a rare, uh, uh, practice and uh, we even have a logo for the and you, you notice this, this is <laughs> a book even designer made it uh, so uh, and finally uh, the talks will be broadcasted uh, by zoom uh, so there will be a remote participation by uh, by zoom so people are watching this from abroad and this will the talks will also be recorded and posted if you permit Okay, so if you don't want your talk to be recorded, or, or if you don't want your talk to be uh, posted, and then please let us know. So, yes, so uh, it's not decided. Maybe somewhere on the ESG users group uh, website, it will be uh, uploaded sometime later after this workshop. And there is also a wiki page uh, for each week. Um, this will be uh, managed by the conveners to document the discussion uh, what, what has been discussed in the afternoon discussion session. And here's the link to it. And there will be a proceedings uh, to be published. Uh, we, are, we are now negotiating with the uh, journal, but uh, there will be a proceeding. So uh, now I hand over to Christians. Where's the folder? Where's the folder? Um, yes, it should be in the folder. I can three, I think. Yes. Okay. So uh, you must think the INT is a rather Byzantine structure after the director and the organizers who are now being welcomed by the conveners of week <laughs> one. <laughs> So uh, on behalf of uh, Tanya and Andreas, uh, uh, we'd like to welcome you all here. It's um, really, uh, it's always a pleasure to be, uh, to be here, for most of us to be back here in Seattle, uh, to the, the, the city, the university, the INT. Um, we have a, an intense week 
ahead of us. And um, this little introduction is um, just about the, the context, the um, present high energy facilities, the future uh, electron ion collider, the objectives of Week One, and then the, uh, um, the, the plan. So, um, this is, how do I scroll here? Uh, okay. No, no, it will work at all. Um, so this is really a, a, a very exciting time in the uh, exploration of um, uh, nuclei atomic systems with uh, high energy probes. Um, we have several, um, in, in, in addition to the, uh, um, the, the, the data, the experimental results we have, we have several facilities that are just coming um, online and will provide data over the next few years. Um, in the area of electromagnetic probes, the uh, 12 GV upgrade is now uh, complete in the sense of uh, construction. Um, the, um, um, uh, very importantly, the, the CBUF accelerator um, can in principle, operate and deliver beam to all four halls simultaneously. Um, physics running has started. Hall A and Hall D have already provided physics results. Uh, um, Hall B is doing physics running. Hall C is uh, uh, commissioning to start physics running very soon. And uh, we expect results to come out uh, over the next uh, five to 10 years. Um, the uh, Compass muon beam experiment has just uh, completed a, um, a run devoted to uh, exclusive processes, generalized particle distributions, and uh, uh, young pair production. And we also have future plans, and we'll hear about them uh, later this week. Then, very importantly, um, ultra peripheral proton nucleus and nucleus nucleus collisions at the LHC and also at WIC <coughs> are uh, really expanding the energy frontier in um, high energy in uh, electromagnetic probes. These are um, electromagnetic processes induced by the White Secker Williams field of a heavy nucleus. Um, as an example, uh, here, this is an, uh, an event with jade side production, coherent jade side production on a nucleus in a, a heavy ion collision at uh, Alice, where uh, the event is totally empty and all you see is the two neurons from the jade side. So, this is something very exciting. Um, and as I said, it's really exploring the, uh, the energy frontier in uh, electromagnetic processes. In the area of uh, hadronic probes, we have the, uh, the LHC experiments now producing results on an almost daily basis on a variety of topics of, interesting, of interest to strong reaction physics, hard processes, final states, small X phenomena, <coughs> multi-particle interactions, jets, diffraction, um, all kinds of nuclear effects. Um, Rick, um, in addition to the uh, PPPAAA results that we have and that are still being analyzed, there will be a, a future AA runs. Um, there will be meson beams available at Compass and J Park, and also uh, um, um, anti proton beams at uh, Panda. So, and of course, um, there is the future. What, what brings us uh, together here is the prospect of a future um, of an electron ion collider as a future facility. Um, this slide is just to um, summarize the baseline parameters as they have um, emerged over the last years and as they were laid down in the white paper and in the uh, uh, National Academy study. So um, we're talking about a facility with a center of mass energy somewhere in the range between 20 and 100 GeV for electron proton. For um, nuclei, there will be a factor of square root of Z over A in the uh, square root of S per nucleon. The um, luminosity will be in, in the range somewhere between 10 to the 33 and 10 to the 34 per square centimeter per second. And just to put this in perspective, this is about uh, two or three orders of magnitude higher than the, uh, the HERA operating luminosity. Uh, most of the simulations that we do for the electron ion collider are done for a, a, a fixed integrated luminosity, and that's typical in the, uh, of the order of 10. Uh, to 100 uh, inverse femtobarns. There will be polarized proton and light ion beams. Um, there might even be a polarized deuteron beam. The, the JLab design is uh, especially, um, uh, say, thought of to, to deliver that. 
that would be polarized helium three and other light ions. And as I said, these are the, um, uh, the machine parameters as they are um, laid out in the EIC white paper and um, um, were kind of blessed in the National Academy of Sciences study. Um, equally important, uh, there will be uh, next generation detectors for the electron ion collider. The um, central detector and the ion end cap will feature uh, the standard calorimetry uh, tracking vertex detection, very importantly, also uh, particle identification. There will be uh, um, special forward detectors on the ion side that allow the detection of exclusive and diffractive protons and the measurement of coherent nuclear processes, as well as um, measurements of nuclear breakup and spectator tagging where the fragments have a different uh, charge to mass ratio than the, uh, than the beam. On the electron side, there will be a low Q squared tagger for uh, quasi real um, photo production. Um, so very briefly, just about the, the, the context how we got to this point, and uh, Yoshitaka already um, summarized this. Um, most of us are familiar with this, but some of our uh, European colleagues um, um, might not uh, uh, might might benefit from a, a, a quick summary of the, the latest steps in the EIC development. So, um, of course, the the, the, uh, the real history goes back much further, really, all the way to the. Uh, late 20th century or early 2000s, but these are just the latest steps. So um, in 2012 and 2014, a white paper was produced um, that laid out the, um, the physics um, of the uh, electron ion collider. This was based on an INT program um, uh, conducted in 2010. It was a 10 week program, really, uh, uh, a legendary event in the uh, EIC community um, that produced a very extensive report, uh, which I think today is still the best uh, repository of the, uh, of the physics. Um, and a very important step was then in the 2015 um, NSAC long range plan of, of um, this is the regular long range planning exercise conducted by the Department of Energy. The EIC was recommended as a priority for, uh, for future construction. This is really a, a great achievement. In some sense, this is why we're, why we're here today. Um, around the same time, um, an EIC user group was formed, which by now consists of um, over 800 physicists and over 170 uh, institutions. Um, this is still a somewhat like, um, I would say institutional body, so the, the, the members are really institutions, not so much individuals, but uh, things are changing and this user group is becoming increasingly active really in, um, um, say, um, encouraging um, uh, physics development and certainly um, representing the ESC science to the outside world. And um, um, I encourage you all to, to follow the activities of this group. Um, another um, important step was uh, um, the Department of Energy commissioned a, uh, a study of the science of the EIC by the National Academy of Sciences. And as Yoshitaka said, uh, uh, Harry was part of that uh, group. And um, the report is available um, online. And um, I just to, um, um, I just wanted to share with you a few adjectives that they attributed to the site, they found it compelling, fundamental, and timely. So for, for uh, details, you, you might want to consult the, uh, um, the report proper. Um, so what are the next steps in this? Um, the, um, presently, both laboratories are working on conceptual design reports. And the next cr uh, crucial step is really what in, in DOE speak is called uh, critical decision zero, which is the acknowledgement of uh, mission need. So uh, that is expected to happen sometime in the next two years or so. And uh, what happens then is anyone's guess. But um, um, as I said, this is the uh, 
the, the context in which um, this um, uh, program takes place. So um, in this uh, program and in, in this week, we have very specific objectives. Our goal is to assess and update the EIC nuclear physics program in the light of recent theoretical and experimental developments and the results of other facilities. In particular, we want to address the following uh, um, questions. What new physics could be explored with the EIC, where new means relative to the 2012-2014 white paper and with the basic machine uh, parameters as defined in the uh, white paper and the NAS study. Um, this can include either new concepts or measurements. Um, so uh, like physics goals that have not yet been um, recognized or new approaches to traditional accepted uh, physics goals. And we will see both of them in our program uh, for this week. Um, another question we have to address is what will be the role of the EIC in the context of uh, other facilities? So that, that's very important to keep in mind as, in, in, as part of our overall assessments of what will be the expected or what is the expected knowledge by the time EIC comes online and um, what are the synergies and the complementarity for purposes such as uh, global analysis, kinematic overlap, cross-check between experiments, etc. So um, the, a few words about the format for this week. So this is an INT program, not a workshop. Uh, we want to keep our discourse as uh, informal as possible. And the conveners will take steps to uh, ensure that it uh, remains uh, informal. The presentation should summarize the status, identify directions, and very importantly, pose questions for discussions. Uh, the discussions are really the most essential part and we need everyone uh, to participate. Uh, we're a relatively small group and uh, we need to pool our expertise and um, really uh, uh, perform a common assessment of um, um, these uh, questions. So we need people to step outside of their comfort zone and um, um, have an opinion about matters that might not be directly your area of expertise. And as Yoshitaka already said, the results will be communicated in a summary document and how exactly this is to be done uh, will be discussed with the, uh, with the organizers and uh, um, our collective can also have input to that uh, question. So uh, this first week will be about uh, generalized parton distributions and um, the physics of generalized parton distribution really has two aspects. Um, one of them is they provide a notion of the spatial structure of hadrons in QCD. So this uh, is interesting because it makes for a new expression of non-perturbative dynamics. We can now study dynamics in the center, in the periphery, etc. Um, it's important for visualization. Um, the GPDs can be connected with higher concepts such as Wigner functions, GPMDs. And this aspect of spatial structure also connects the GPDs with a small X physics and proton proton scattering. The second important aspect is that uh, GPDs give access to matrix elements of local operators that are not otherwise accessible, namely operators with spin uh, larger than two. Of particular interest are the form factors of the, of the energy momentum tensor. Um, they sometimes contain information about the total and orbital angular momentum of uh, quarks and gluons, but not only that, also uh, about the forces, the pressure in hadrons, etc. And um, these matrix elements are also accessible in standard lattice QCD calculations with local operators. So I'd like to emphasize here that both these aspects are um, essential to the EIC physics program and both will be discussed in week one. And if, if you look at the uh, historic development of this field of GPDs, it's actually rather interesting. Um, initially, the aspect of uh, the connection with the angular momentum of quarks and gluons was prominent. Then um, interest switched more to uh, um, hadron imaging and spatial structure 
And now actually there's renewed interest in this matrix elements of local operator because of the connection with the, uh, the energy momentum tensor, what's, what's called the, nuclear, the origin of nuclear mass, the physics associated with the D term, etc. So it's a, it, it's a very dynamic field and we hope to um, see some of that uh, excitement in uh, this week. So here's the agenda for this week. So we will have one uh, uh, defined larger topic uh, each day and we'll address that in presentations and in, in extensive uh, topical discussions. So today, Monday, uh, we'll focus on GPEs and deeply virtual company scattering and related processes. We'll hear about DVCS theory and GPD extraction, DVCS experiments, DVCS simulations for the EIC, and also a new approach to timeline Compton scattering. Um, tomorrow, on Tuesday, we'll focus on the connection with, uh, of GPDs to nuclear structure, Wigner functions. We hear about the physics of the energy momentum tensor form factors, uh, twist three GPDs and angular momentum. GTMDs and Wigner functions and uh, color correlations in the nucleon. On Wednesday, we'll uh, focus on GPDs in meson production. We'll hear about the theory of uh, hard meson electroproduction, the connection to GPDs, as well as high mass uh, photon production. We'll review heavy quaconium production in QCD and um, uh, simulations of meson production at the EIC. On Thursday, the focus will be on nuclear GPDs, small X physics, and the connection with PP scattering. We'll hear about nuclear shadowing in exclusive processes, uh, GPD measurements on EV3 and neutron structure, uh, the connection of GPDs with the transverse geometry in PP scattering, and uh, new approaches to measurements of Wigner functions. And lastly, on Friday, we'll um, so the topic will be QCD and lattice, uh, uh, GPDs in lattice QCD and the path for the uh, electron ion collider. We'll hear about uh, parton distributions from lattice QCD and first results from uh, 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 first uh, LQCD results for GPDs, as well as model calculations of Euclidean correlators. And um, also on Friday, we'll, we'll have our um, um, final discussion. Um, about uh, the summary of the workshop and the communication of the results. And as I said, um, um, <coughs> on each day there will be topical discussions and they are really the main thing. And the, um, um, the presentation should really focus on providing uh, input to the discussions. And uh, so let me ask, are there any questions regarding the, the, the program for week one? The, the agenda, any suggestions, anything you should add, drop. This is your last chance to, uh, to, 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 to drop this class before you have to <laughs> attend it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, it's okay. But, uh, um, so no, no, no other, um, no other questions. Then, um, without uh, further ado, um, I would like to turn over to. Uh, uh, oh, would like to start with our uh, discussion of. Uh, uh, GPDs and deeply virtual Compton scattering and uh, related processes. And I, 